Uh, hi everyone, this is Jason from spiritualbabies.net. Uh, you joined us again for the second live show with Rabbi Tobias Singer, where you ask your questions um, about the Tanakh and about faith and about your Bibles. And uh, <laughs> Tobias Singer will um, tell you the answers because uh, he's such a, a genius and an awesome guy. Um, he's given his time up freely for all this. And so I just want to start off by um, welcoming. Uh, Tobia to the show and by saying um, thanks for um, giving your time. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, so uh, Tobia, I'm going to fire up um, the first question here, which is from uh, Devorah Lee. It was asked on Facebook. A Christian friend of mine was saying that Jesus is the Messiah, basing it on the fact that he was descended from the tribe of Judah, just like King David, the royal line, as well as the tribe of Levi, the priestly line. What about Numbers 36, though? I thought Hashem commanded the Israelites to marry within their father's tribal clan. Does this apply in the modern Jewish society? That's a, that's a great question. And actually built into that question is a whole series of questions. So let's try to first of all get uh, un unfold. What does it mean to be from a tribe? Great. First of all, you cannot be from two different tribes. Unless there was a way for two men to impregnate one woman, the same egg, that can't happen. And that would have been forbidden anyway. So, therefore, that can't be. Because the way you know what tribe you're from, I mean, how do you know what tribe you belong to? So we have a Bible, and Scripture tells us, the Torah tells us, that you know what tribe you're from based on who you're from father is, your biological father, and you'll find this in the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18, and, and why is the book of, it's a strange name, Numbers, for a holy book in the Bible. It sounds more like that should be like an accounting book. Well, the book of Numbers has gotten that name because it begins with a accounting, a census of the Jewish people. How many men of military age belong to each tribe. The total account will wind up being 603,550 people. But how do you know what tribe you're from? Well, verse 18 says, Lemishpachaisam, Levesavaisam. According to your family, according to your avosam. What does av mean? Abba. It means according to your father. That's how you determine. So you you can't possibly be from two different tribes. And in fact, when I said that, my microphone got so excited, it jumped. So I'm just going to fix that there. Okay, there we go. So number one, you can't be from two different tribes. As it turns out, Christianity is going to have a very serious problem because when we get to the book of Matthew and Luke, the, the Christian Bible, we don't know who wrote these books, but whoever did, they were highly literate Christians living toward the end of the first century. They're going to claim that Jesus was born, was conceived of a virgin. That's not a claim that Paul will make in earlier writings, but it is a claim made by Matthew and Luke. They have different plot devices about his life and how he was born in Bethlehem and so on, but the key point is, is that Matthew and Luke claim that Jesus didn't have a human father, that his mother was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Well, as it turns out, although that claim would, would be very appealing to the ancient world, where many of the gods and even emperors of Rome were conceived to, by a virgin, but as it turns out, th that creates a monumental problem. And that problem is simple, and that is that Jesus then didn't have a human Jewish father with which to trace himself back to King David, and then he is ineligible to be the Messiah, which means the claim of a virgin birth actually sabotages the claim that Jesus could be the Messiah. So let's begin there. Now we, so some Christians, I'll say this, will say, well, um, uh, Matthew is, uh, is, is Joseph's genealogy, but again, that would be irrelevant because jo we, we're looking in Matthew chapter 1, verse 2 through 16, at a genealogy of Joseph, not of Jesus. 
Christians argue that Luke's genealogy, which you'll find in chapter 3, is that of Mary, his mother. First of all, that's not true. If you look at the book of Luke, it's very clear that Luke is emphasizing that it is Joseph's genealogy, and it is Joseph that is from the house of David, not Mary. How do you know that? Well, look it up for yourself. You're going to be hearing that often in our show right here in, with, uh, with Jason's Spiritual Babies on Twisted Scripture, and that is, look it up for yourself, Luke one twenty seven. It says there explicitly that it was Joseph who was from the house of David. In fact, the whole story of the family, Joseph and Mary, having to go from Nazareth because of a census by Octavius, by Caesar Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, why did they have to go to Bethlehem? Well, Matt, Luke's story tells us that they had to go to Bethlehem because Joseph was from the house of David, never Mary. So that's in Luke. That means this is not Tovia Singer speaking. It's not me. This is what the Christian Bible claims. That's next. Let me address very quickly, uh, and then I'm going to get to the Messiah, but I want to address Numbers chapter 36. In Numbers 36, Moses is presented with a conundrum. What is the problem? You have what's called B'nai Salafchad, the daughters of Salafchad, which essentially the story, the event that occurred 3,300 years ago was very tragic. You had a man that had only daughters and no sons, and he died. And here it is that these girls, none of them have yet been married, and they want to ensure that the land that is assigned to, that, to their tribe will stay in their tribe. So they go, what do we do? Now this is a conundrum because, because in light of the fact that you know your tribe by the male and not by the female. That means Numbers 36 demonstrates that the tribe identity is only passed on by the male. If a mother can pass on tribe identity, Numbers 36 would collapse, wouldn't make any sense. Because then why not go to the daughter's mother's house? What tribe was she from? It's She's not relevant. So Numbers 36 highlights, italicizes, and bolds, underlines what I've been saying. And that is, we, we look at the father determines the tribe identity. Here it is, these young women, devout women, they wanted to do the right thing, but they also wanted to keep this plot of land in their own tribe. Moses speaks to God and he comes up with a solution. What is the solution? The solution is, if you want to keep the land in your own tribe, you have to marry men of your own tribe. And therefore, those men will then, by having husbands who are from the same tribe, the land, the inheritance, will then stay in your family. Well, bingo! Once again, the solution, not only does the problem demonstrate the, pro the conundrum posed to Moses, demonstrate that only a father conveys tribe identity, but the solution also solves that, because the solution says that the way you know what tribe you're from is through, your, through the male, and therefore you have to marry men of your own tribe. So therefore Numbers 36 proves the point. It doesn't mitigate against it. it and one other point is, Numbers 36 does not suggest that people had to marry people from their own tribe. That's nonsense. People could marry from any tribe. Although I will say that there was a culture in certain periods of Jewish history that people tend to want to marry in their own tribes for the reason of Numbers 36. That means people wanted to keep their inheritance in their own family. They didn't want land to move and so on, and naturally you grew up in a certain area, you'd marry someone from the same neighborhood and so on, but there's no commandment in the Torah to marry someone from your own tribe or not marry someone from another tribe. The only prohibition we find in the Torah is don't marry outside of the Jewish faith, don't marry a non-Jew. That prohibition we have, there's no prohibition uh, to marry. But if g women, in this case these are girls, these are young ladies, if you want to keep the inheritance in your family, make sure you marry not any boy, but a boy from your tribe, whatever that is. So that Numbers 36 doesn't mitigate against anything. It demonstrates that, in fact, only the male could convey tribe identity. As it turns out, the Christian Bible never claims that Jesus was from the house of Levi. You won't find that anywhere. 
the reason where, the, where that comes from, what is the antecedent for that claim, is Hebrews, really, and that is the claim that Jesus was some sort of priest. He was the high priest. He's the new high priest. And therefore, he should, he should be from the tribe of Levi. He should be a descendant of Aaron, like I am. I'm a descendant of Aaron, and I'm a priest. So he, he, the idea that conveyed in Hebrews, particularly Hebrews chapter 7 and 8, that Jesus is our high priest, that's why they want to have it from both. But there's nowhere it says that Jesus was from, uh, from the tribe of Levi in the Christian Bible. That doesn't exist. And you can't be both from Judah and from Levi. One, now, here is the big, big point. Everything I just said to you until now is actually minor. This is the big issue. I, I think the, many people are under the impression, because of the emphasis placed on Jesus' genealogy in the very opening chapter of the Christian Bible in the book of Matthew, that when the Messiah comes, we're going to go, or a person saying that I'm the Messiah, we're going to go, you know, so the temple's been rebuilt in Jerusalem, all the Jews have returned to the land of Israel, there's worldwide peace on earth, there's universal knowledge of God, and now the Messiah comes, or the putative Messiah comes, and we go, Ho, 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 hang on there for one moment. Not so quick, buddy. We want to see your driver's license. We want to see a government-issued photo ID so we can demonstrate. Show me a genealogical record certified by, by the king of the Jews, me, me, that says, stamp, that you are from the house of David and Judah. That's nonsense. That's not how it's going to happen. What would he present? Like a passport? What does that mean? As it turns out, most Jews today that we encounter are, in fact, from the tribe of Judah, because we only have three tribes today. Levi, I'm from the tribe of Levi. I'm a Kohen, I'm a priest, I'm a descendant of Aaron. You have Jews who are from Benjamin. You know who would be from Benjamin? Mordechai. Well, <laughs> Mordechai was from the tribe of Benjamin. But notice it says that Mordechai was a Jew, meaning he's from the Jewish people, right? Listen, uh, just Jason, I'm the funny one here, not you, so try to... Okay, now, so he's trying to stick his nose in my business. And, okay, so what was I saying? I got all excited. So, oh, we took... Oh, yeah, yeah, so as it turns out, almost most of Jews, the millions and millions of Jews that we know today, we're all from the tribe of Judah. That doesn't make us the Messiah, or else there'll be millions of Jews around. We don't, we, this is key, I want you to listen very carefully. When the Mashiach comes, and the world is going to change dramatically, and ten Gentiles will grab the hem of a Jew and say, take us with you, now we know God is with you, we're not going to say, whoa, not so fast, buddy. We want to see some, some ID here that you are from the house of David. No. There's a covenant that God made with King David in 2 Samuel chapter 7. And that is, it, the, the kingship will always come through you. The legitimate throne, royal throne, will come through your seed. It will never be torn away from you as it was from your predecessor, Saul. That's the promise. So therefore, Mashiach will come from the house of David. But that's not, when someone is from the house of David, that doesn't mean you are the Messiah. That's, just in, that's not a sign of the Messiah. That's just information about the Messiah. The Messiah has to be a man, not a woman. For whatever reason, I don't know. He has to be a man. That doesn't make you the Messiah because you're a man. The covenant is, the promise is that when Mashiach comes, it's going to come from the house of David. But you don't have to show photo ID. M Although I am a priest, I'm from Levi, I'm direct descendant of Aaron, my great-grandmother, as it turns out, was a descendant of King David. My great-grandmother on my grandmother's side, so my grandmother's mother, she was a direct descendant of Rashi, who was from the house of David, the great commentator on the Bible, Rabban Gamliel, who's also in the book Christian Bible. He was from the house of David. So I am, maybe I'm also from 50 different houses. Well, that's nonsensical. In reality, um, you know who, what tribe you are from, your father. There is no claim in the Christian Bible that Jesus was from Levi. It's all from Judah. We have two very different 
genealogies in Matthew and Luke, they contradict each other on such fundamental on such a fundamental way. This is not really directly relevant, but according to Matthew, uh, they can't even get straight who's you know Joseph's father was. According to Matthew, Jesus' father was Jacob, and according to Luke, his father was a Haley. So there are two conflicting genealogies, but and they also are of enormous difference in size. I mean, Luke's genealogy, just counting from Abraham, Ab Luke does go back to Adam, but just going back to Abraham, Luke has 56 generations and Matthew has 41. But that's not really germane to your question. So there's the answer. The answer is there's no claim Jesus from Levi that comes, that, that comes from two things. It comes from Hebrews 7 and 8, and it also is comes from the fact that Luke's um, infancy narrative, this is unique to Luke, will claim that Mary had family members, specifically a cousin, Elizabeth, who was from the tribe of Levi, in fact, was from a priestly family. That is in Luke, but that's her cousin. But we don't even know how Mary's cousin, that means it could have been Mary's mother and, and Elizabeth's mother were sisters. That would have been irrelevant. That doesn't mean Mary was from the, from the tribe of Levi. And that assertion is not made in Luke. And that story about Zachariah and Elizabeth is what's called an L source. It's unique to the book of Luke. So there's your answer. We don't, the Messiah comes, we're not going to say, show me ID. When Messiah comes, we're going to know it. The whole world will know it. When Messiah comes, we're going, the whole world will know about God. Temple he built, everyone will know. We're not going to say, show me what tribe you're from. As it turns out, there are tens of thousands of people today who are from the house of David, who are from, from the, who are eligible to be the Messiah. doesn't mean they are the Messiah. You have to have virtue to be uh, the next king who is the heir to the messianic throne. Anyways, that was it. I think I did a very good job with that. Na, 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 na.